So today we are at Team Lifeline um, and we've been given a tour of this facility where um, volunteer teens um, with the help of some workers uh, take uh, suicide calls and um, calls from other teens um, and um, young people that are experiencing issues with important stuff um, and trying to guide them through that and and help them pretty much. Um, so yeah, it's been a, an important lesson uh, and I met some, some superheroes that I like to call them um, that are doing some very important work. Teen Lifeline is probably best known for our peer counseling hotline. That means that we train teens to staff a hotline and help other teens. But really what we do is much more than that. We serve the community really on trying to prevent teen suicides. We do education, prevention, in schools, in the community, training people how to recognize and respond to suicide risk. A young person could really call about anything, um, problems at home, problems at school with friends. Um, we know that one in three of our calls are from a young person thinking of suicide. And we know that the suicide isn't the problem, that there are a lot of things going on in their life that leads a person to think about that. And so we really are dealing with a full array of problems that teenagers have. So in 2015, we started a school ID initiative, which meant that we put our hotline number on the back of school IDs. So that started in 2015. Last year, there was a law passed that made that mandatory for all high schools to have the back on the back of their school ID a crisis number, and that number hopefully is ours. Um, there are over a thousand high schools in the state of Arizona, so if you think about the number of youth that we're serving every year who actually know that there is help and hope, and it's really just a phone call away. I've been forced to think about stuff that I wouldn't necessarily think about um, before coming here. Um, putting things into perspective a little bit. Um, soccer is not the most important thing in the world. Um, saving lives um, would be uh, a lot more important than that and these people are doing that every day um, so um, I respect what they do um, very much and I think it's extremely important because I mean yeah they were talking about it they take multiple calls every day of people that are struggling with things and they're helping them and then they're trained to know how to help them um, and they're making a huge difference so it's just putting things into perspective a little bit. One of the main things I thought about being here was that, um, and I told them as well, I don't know who came up with it, but the fact that uh, you have teenagers at the other side of the line and taking a call and not necessarily workers that are 15, 20, 30 years older than the, the teenagers calling in for help um, is, is genius because it helps a lot because let's say my dad or my mom is speaking a different language than, than I, I am maybe. Um, and talking to someone who's, uh, who's on the same page as you and speaking the same language as you is, um, is very important and can help and it can be fatal. Um, so I think, I think that's genius, uh, genius move from them uh, and, and something I really respect, yeah. So to be a volunteer, there's only two requirements. A young person has to be 15 years old and they have to have no violent offenses on their record. Um, and, and besides that, they sign up, um, they agree to go through training. It's a huge commitment. Training itself is about 80 hours. So it's 80 hours before they ever pick up a telephone call. And for some volunteers, it's even more. Um, so they have to be willing to put in the time and, and to invest in it. So those are really probably the two biggest factors. Training, like I said, is about 80 hours. Once they do that, they meet with the clinical director and decide whether or not they're ready to get on the hotline or do more training. And some of our volunteers might need more. Once they're cleared to take the hotline, then they can come in. We don't schedule them, they come in. Um, we have many volunteers who come in frequently. We have some who maybe have other commitments and come in. Um, they're required to come in 15 hours a month, but most of them do way more than that. Um, so what happens on a normal shift is they'll come in to what we call the lounge um, and kind of settle in and then they wait for um, hotline calls. When the phone rings, they jump up, they go into the hotline room and they you know, answer the phone and try to provide help and hope to the callers. I've learned a little bit about um, different techniques of how to communicate with someone that uh, might be in a, a difficult spot. Uh, how the flow of the conversation is supposed to go, um, how to be a good listener um, and really just um, that conversation can go a long way. and. In this example save lives um, but just like in general that if someone's having a rough time have a conversation with them 
um, and how you're supposed to do that or how you could do that to be to be effective. The difference that we're making on the hotline in the lives of teens who call um, is immense. We are saving lives. We're helping kids find hope and help. Um, but equally as important is what's happening with our teen volunteers. Um, their lives change when they help others um, and they learn the value of service. So while they stay with us for three years, they really live a life from there on serving others and knowing the importance of giving back. Um, and I think one of the really special things is that um, they know they can make a difference if they invest in something and try. And so they go on to serve on boards and start nonprofits and do all that kind of stuff to make their community better.